Hi, so good evening, and I've decided to add a new feature to my YouTube channel. Uh, and this would be Stellarium, the astronomy uh, software that allows you to see virtual images of the sky. For those interested in stargazing and planet gazing, uh, what I want to bring to your attention, and we don't get much more present day than this. Today is Tuesday, uh, January 2nd, 2018. And it is 8.47 p.m. here in uh, California. What I want to do is uh, take the clock and move it forward to the morning, uh, tomorrow morning, January 3rd, and bring your attention to the fact that Mars and Jupiter are not very far away from each other. And as we approach January 4th, 5th, 6th, and then 7th, especially January 7th, the morning of Sunday, January 7th, uh, Jupiter and Mars are uh, going to be right in conjunction with one another and pass very close to each other. Uh, let me back up so that we can get more of a uh, far away field, a wider field of view. In fact, they're so close to each other that they're perceived as uh, practically being you know, right on top of one another. Uh, in reality, you'll probably see them as pinpoints, assuming the weather's okay and you can... Uh, that the skies are clear that day. Of, of course, everything in astronomy uh, is predicated upon being able to see the sky without clouds in it. And you can't do much about that, though, if, if there are any. If you are able to see low on your horizon, as low as 5 degrees, you could start looking as early as uh, 3.20 in the morning, give or take, and you have a viewing window of about uh, 3 hours before it starts getting too uh, bright in the morning twilight. Uh, much past uh, 6.45, you're probably not going to see anything, but uh, that would be good viewing period. Uh, ideal, if you don't want to wake up too early, it would probably be about 6 o'clock in the morning. It's still early enough that it's dark out, uh, but not uh, so early that you, uh, you're you losing out on your valuable sleep. Now let's bump ahead four days to uh, the morning of... Uh, Thursday, January 11th, this would be a good opportunity to see Mars and Jupiter triangulated with the waning crescent moon in the southeast sky. Uh, for all this activity, look to the southeast uh, in the dawn period, and that's when you want to look for these things. Uh, good thing to look for. Now, let me uh, bring Jupiter and Mars labels back into uh, focus and you'll notice that uh, at 6 a.m. you're just starting to see Saturn come up. Saturn uh, conjuncted with the Sun not too long ago and as we move out of uh, January and toward April you'll notice that Jupiter moves out of the picture but Saturn gets ever increasingly close. I'm going to, have to back the time up a little bit. Uh, ever increasingly close to Mars and is going to pass it and the exact moment that or the date best viewing date for when Saturn is in conjunction with Mars in the southeastern sky or I should say south southeast uh, would be the morning of Monday April 2nd 2018 so keep an eye out for that uh, as far as viewing time if you get up as early as 2:45 in the morning and bear in mind it depends on where you are within your time zone if further east or west in your time zone uh, is going to change those rise times but if you have uh, the ability to see uh, on a low horizon five degrees above it uh, you could start viewing as early as 2:45 in the morning and make it up to almost uh, six well, that's a, that's going to be a little late it faded uh, six o'clock would probably uh, be a Six o'clock to six fifteen would probably be about as late as you'd want to look before it starts getting too light to the east. And then, as an added bonus, that this is April second. If you wait a few more days on April the seventh, and let me back it up an hour, uh, you have an extra special treat of seeing the moon, Saturn, and Mars in triangulation. This would be a last uh, quarter moon above Saturn, and then diagonal and to the left below Saturn is Mars. Uh, those three in the south-southeastern sky in the morning, pre-dawn light would be a, a, a nice treat to see. And then, of course, Jupiter well off to the uh, right or west. Uh, remember that Jupiter 
uh, conjuncted with Mars several months beforehand in January, and that's what would be coming up now. Now, the other thing I want to finally bring to your attention is that as we move into the spring months, let's turn our attention through the day and into the evening sky, and we'll bump it up to about 8 o'clock in the evening on the evening of Saturday, April 7th. Venus has uh, conjuncted with the sun back on March the 8th, or excuse me, January the 8th, and moved from being a morning planet to an evening planet. And as you back up into mid-March, uh, it's, uh, even though it's darker at that time, a little, little harder to see awfully low in the sky. But if you wait until the spring, or April, and then advance, uh, well, that's too far, advance a few minutes into the darkness, uh, you'll be able to see it. It'll get higher and higher in the sky as we move closer to May. And I do believe it will peak. I don't want to bring it much below that tree. It will peak at about May the 18th or May the 21st and be the highest in the sky it's going to be. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity to see it. Let me get rid of this uh, false horizon and make a zero horizon so we can actually see that it'll stay up well after uh, sunset in the late spring and bear in mind by May 21st the sun's setting pretty late uh, so to still be able to see Venus as much as five degrees above the horizon after 10 o'clock at night is uh, pretty incredible so if you're into seeing Venus as a night planet uh, that would be the best time to do it, to have an elongation angle of about 32 degrees. So anyway, those are a few things to keep an eye out for as we get closer to uh, January and parts of April and into the month of May regarding Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and uh, Venus.